Hello, everybody. Let me get this set up. Please stand by. That's right, we got music now. Gotta figure out this YouTube link real quick. Ten more seconds. Let's get started. Welcome to the second edition of Jaguar's Film Room. Last Tuesday, this Tuesday, whatever you want to call it, I went through every play of the Jaguars week one against the Washington Commanders. Uh, watched it beforehand to try to not go in blind for the first one, and also for the sake of time, but it still took two hours. So for today's and likely the future ones, I'm not going to look at it and just going to go into it blind, which is going to take a long time. But again, it took a long time anyway. But I'm also going to post recaps, which you can find on BigCatCountry.com. The Tuesday offensive recap is already up, uh, so you can read my takeaways there. And now we're doing defense. The post, the recap, should be live online tomorrow at some point, whenever I get around to it. Um, all right. Before we quick play, what am I watching for today? Young guys at every level, first-year rookie Trayvon Walker, Rookie Devin Lloyd, second year Andre Sisco, safety. Um, I feel like there was one other guy I wanted to watch. Those three at least. Young guys, watching for scheme, of course, for the Jaguars especially, but really every team in the league. It's important to win on early downs, mostly against the run, hence uh, drafting Devon Hamilton and signing Foley, whatever his last name is, from the Jets, so that on third down you can do a bunch of fun stuff with Josh Allen and Walker and run Mike, Cod Mike Codwell's blitz packages that he got from Todd Bowles in Tampa Bay. Uh, so looking at success on early downs to get into those third and longs so that the rushers can quote-unquote pin their ears back, how well we did at that. Uh, there's definitely some missed tackles and busted coverages, so we're going to look at those plays and how they can be fixed or how they should have been made. Um, the young guys, that seems like enough. Let's just get into it. First and ten, down three zero. I might forget, but I'm gonna try to let it go the entire way, both all twenty two and the end zone on every play, and then we'll talk a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Man, Carson Wentz will never get old. All right. So it looks like we've got cover three zone defense from the Jaguars. Cisco's deep, which is good because number two can't play there at all. Or Sean Jenkins, Ray Sean Jenkins, excuse me. So, oh man, I need to figure out a paint tool or something. Oh well. Rayshon is dropping all the way back into a deep third. Cisco's got another third, and Campbell's got the last one. I think this is Campbell's fault, or Bloom coverage. Let's watch the top of the screen up here. Mm. Yeah, Cisco, or Campbell's just in a tough spot because there's a sale concept which works beautifully against this coverage. Uh, so Shaq kind of has to get up for this guy. Campbell should have gone up for this guy. Cisco is with this guy. Um, but Campbell is obviously threatened by the deeper route. And so if you're going to get fooled by one, might as well with the shallower pass go. Um, 
Shaq could have gotten a little bit more depth, but I think this was just a good play call more than anything else, and more so on Campbell. To I mean, Dotson good did a good job of getting in Campbell's blind spot and then breaking. He's a good route runner, as we saw the whole game pretty much, and then Wentz is just bad. Campbell was not the player I was expecting him coming into this, criticizing. Up front, we really get no penetration. Walker's coming in on Leno, Lino, maybe, who had a good game towards the end. But, like, other than that, there's just nothing going on. Not a great start, but it's good to play AFC South quarterbacks. Mm. This is the reason to be excited about Lloyd here. He was pretty hesitant. I mean, did a good job of kind of maintaining his gap assignment and not over-pursuing. But at the same time, he didn't kind of like get there like that either. But he was still able to get there eventually because of his athleticism. Get behind, is that Norwell 68? Yeah, it is. One more time. Yeah, that's honestly a blown block by Norwell there. Not Maybe not a blown block per se, because he had to, on the zone concept, get the first guy to help with the angle and then go to the second level. Not necessarily an easy block, but we saw Norwell do it with the Jaguars. Saw the play by Lloyd. Set up. Sorry, I want to see what the down distance is. Second and... Oh, third and five. Gorgeous play design. One of the few that you could notice watching live just because it was in the broadcast angle, but pretty cool to have the guy faking the flat and then come back. Again, not a lot of push inside. This is, I think, two just really good or two good passing play calls in a row. So we'll go quickly over the coverage. Oh, <laughs> I forgot I was on the four wide receiver set, too. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, you can see that, like, there's just not enough bodies over there to keep up with everyone. Williams is playing the flats here. That's his responsibility. And so, like, on this kind of concept, you'd expect there to be a flat and then a deep route, and then something to the corner, kind of like we saw on the first play. But on this one, Williams gets fooled a little bit. Curtis gets open. Good play call. I think most corners like would do what Williams did there, even though it looks pretty bad. That's why we watch tape, baby. <laughs> so that the ugliness can just look kind of bad, not super bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love a good tight end screen. Shout out Mercedes Lewis, one of the best. Subjectively. Woof! Good hit, Cisco. The Russell Westbrook of the NFL, per me. Let's see. It looks like they're in man coverage based on the motion and Shaq following across the formation, as well as what was happening during the actual play. So let's see if there was someone that was supposed to be manned up on the tight end here. I mean, Lloyd would make sense just based on where people are in the formation. If Campbell's got this guy. Shaq is going across with this guy. Lloyd has the tight end. 
gets caught up in play action. Rookie mistake. And also, like, it's a scripted play call on the first drive, so credit to the offense. That would have been on Damien Wilson for sure. And we got a first down. Pass midfield. <laughs> Smoot has never been good at those. Love, or the no, that's not Smoot, that's why. I keep thinking Smoot's 94. That happened on Sunday too for me. But considering it was full, it's less surprising that just, oh, what am I doing? Better job there by Lloyd of being kind of aware. It was a better rep for him. Um, I mean, clearly if Wentz kept it, there wasn't really a ton going on behind the scenes in coverage. Pretty well defended. I mean... It's the first good rep of the game for the Jags defense or overall play. Let's watch. Uh, Lloyd from the start one more time. <laughs> yeah, there's just no one there. What else was he going to do? Salute, so Jags fans. What the? What is happening on this play? So much wrong by both teams. Oh my gosh. We got our first kind of sort of pressure of the game. Unless you count the one of the last play action attempts with the bootleg. Cosme has a pretty solid recovery. Jags didn't do a good enough job of attacking this weakness. Not that Cosme is necessarily a weakness, but compared to the other side, this guy's also a second-year tackle in the league. Uh, with the coverage, though, it looks like we have a dagger concept. Or not even a dagger, just a dig, which is wide open. Dotson creates pretty good separation at the top of the route. Wentz kind of sort of looks over there, but feels like he wanted to go to this, again, concepts that's beating the sidelines coverage. That's a risky throw and a play that Jenkins has to make. Bad angle, or like a deep, not a, just make a play on the ball. Jenkins is like one of the worst defenders tracking and covering deep balls that I've seen. Like you just can't play deep at all. He's like viable as a run defender, but like man, they need another safety. We'll talk about needs a little bit later. I was really paying attention to that. Let me watch that one more time. Could he have gotten this ball? Look at how little space is between there. He just overcut it a little bit, but like, you can't be reaching for it there. You gotta track the football. That's a bad play. Should have been an incomplete pass. To a running back, too. To toasted by a running back. Another good play. But that's that's one of the plays that was a good call by the um a good call by the offense, but the Jags still should have gotten a stop. Hmm. Dang. Let's go 9-4. Yeah. That was nice. I think that was uh, Trey Turner that that was against for Foley. That's why you get him in free agency. But doing that against Jonathan Taylor too on Sunday and eventually Derrick Henry. 
That's what we need to see on early downs. This is another great play call by underrated offensive coordinator Scott Turner. I'm not saying he's top 10 or anything, but relatively, or just generally speaking, underrated. Here the Jaguars are playing man defense in the at the goal line. They're going to switch assignments because of this guy coming over in motion. So now at this point, Shaq has McLaurin, Cisco has uh, Samuel, and then it's a pick play, not called. I mean, let the boys play. I'm not necessarily mad that that wasn't called, but like Cisco live kind of looks like he like wasn't really trying to cover the route, but it's one of those things where it's Tony Soprano. What are you gonna do? All right, first and seven, first and ten, up seven three. Oh my god. What is happening? No pressure again. Excuse me, Jesus. Albeit, a lot of these, uh, Plays so far have been play action. Like, you can see Josh Allen here. He's got to respect the run. He gets a little bit kind of sort of chipped. There's a Euro step better than Zay Jones. Shout out to Tuesday's watchers. I mean, attacking the three seams against... This looks like cover two. Jenkins is just rotating late. <clears throat> like, when you're looking at this, like, Jenkins has this guy who's coming deep. Shaq has, has his eyes on this guy. Lloyd, like, maybe just next time, keep going deep with him and then come up, even though I know he's seeing the running back here. And wants to get after him. I think. It's just a good vertical concept. And again, Carson Wentz bails out the Jags with a bad throw. Gosh. Trayvon is pretty ridiculous, man. I mean, I'm not saying it's good to be, like, late with the push, but I feel like every single play, it's been, like, even if he's late, he pushes because he's just that strong. It's ridiculous. Man, this is a 44-minute long video. Sheesh. Nice decision by Wentz here. It's just a numbers game. This is just Mac Jones in college right here. More guys in the box. Throw it to where you have a numbers advantage. This is the first play that I noticed, Lloyd, watching live on Sunday. Like, oof, that was a bad miss tackle. That did not look pretty. Just chalk that up to the hamstring injury, though. First game jitters, NFL rookie. It's plenty of excuses. You just gotta keep getting better. Oh. So they had numbers here eventually, but Jenkins bails out late. Mm. Nice job by Jenkins coming back up though. To make the play. That was him, right? No, that was Cisco making the play. Jenkins starts here. Cisco starts here. I know Jenkins runs back, but... Oh, they did 
Cisco did come up, but still, it's kind of telling who makes the play. Nice job by Cisco to make up uh, for Lloyd. All right, we can go ahead. First down, cool motions, Scott Turner. Ah, this play was almost so cool. If he just like threw him to the ground, it would have been awesome highlight. Still a highlight play, but it just didn't feel as good. It's nice to have playmakers. You need that to win games. Another pretty basic uh, cover, too. That one might have been Tampa. Let's run through it again. He would be dropping pretty deep. Yeah, that's Tampa, too. And then just going to where the soft spot in the zone is. I didn't watch the pass rushers, but, like, just the right play call to beat this coverage... The right decision by the quarterback, pretty easy. Hmm. Norla did a nice job on Key. I was hoping that Key would have a big first game. I feel like I didn't even hear his name, to be honest. Like, what's going on on the right side? What's our plan here? Well, like, these are the two vets. Oh. Was Smoot supposed to come back around? That was going to take forever. It can't be. Smoot is far too slow to be doing the loops on stunts. Very underrated player in general. But, like, the reason I thought keep mixing up him and Foley is because he's just slow. Ooh, this is fun. I didn't even notice this. Too bad they jumped off. But, uh, first sign of a cool blitz package right here. Man, that would have been a fun one. Alas, got cut down on the penalties. I'm not concerned now because it's a bad roster in week one with the new staff. If it's a problem on Sunday in week three, then I'll be concerned. <sighs> Is this third down? First down. Like, this is a cool front formation. Key over the center. Comes around. Nice job up front by Washington. Let's watch this one more time, and then we'll go to the coverage and see what Williams did. I think he just got beat on a drag route, and then a good move by a younger player. More athletic player. This is a really good job by Cosme to come back over and beat Key, who... Again, didn't do much this game from what I saw live, but as we saw in the preseason and training camp, is a genuinely solid pass rusher, if not outright good. So good job by Cosme there. I mean, that's that's held up. Blocked pretty well by Washington's offensive line. That's impressive coaching and execution, whatever else you want to call it. Oh, we got to go backwards. So we got man coverage behind the blitz. Might have been the first time man has been run all game by Jacksonville on this third down. And then Williams, who didn't play at all in the preseason or training camp because of, I believe, a hamstring injury, gets caught up in kind of sort of a pick. I mean, the pick is like kind of like the touchdown where it's like, what are you going to do? It's a pick play. He actually stayed pretty close to him. But obviously you got to make this tackle. He was just assuming he was going to break for the pylon on third down. Curtis Samuel is a good player and made a good move. Perhaps, well, I was going to say talent over scheme, but Scott Turner was kind of dicing us up too. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a uh, that's Sam Cosme right there. That's the first down, Sam Cosme. Hmm. Is that Lloyd? I mean, he's all over the place, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah, that's a nice play, Lloyd. He, like, even on this play, when, like, it's a good rep, he doesn't look all the way there physically to me. Maybe it's just because I watched highlights of him at Utah instead of film. I mean, he's patient. I don't know. Could be nitpicking. But he just looked kind of slow to me, and so I'm hoping in general on Sunday, so I'm hoping that uh, it's because of rust and it, the injury, and he'll keep, keep getting faster and better. Wow, good push by Foley. Goodness. This is what I'm talking about. Good run defense on early down, so it's set up another third down. Foley with, oh my gosh. Holy cow, that's an awesome rep. He didn't finish it, you know, but like, my God. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's watch this side. Oh, my gosh. Did Chase on shed someone? Okay, Chase on. <laughs> Way to stay on the field. That was weird. Good run defense. We're setting up. Wait, 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 wait. Third and seven. Third and eight. Looks like we're going to get more man defense here. Four man rush. Oh my god. That's despicable. What was Cosme doing here? Josh Allen gets like a. F huh. Just a miscommunication, I guess. Once does a good job of getting it out. To what I can only assume this is his hot read. And then more missed tackles. Man. That's like a... Jeez. That's two bad ones, but... Two different receivers got two different corners on the Jags with different removes. Reminds me of the Patriots because Julian Edelman and Danny Mandola did this weird thing where they'd catch it and then immediately just like, flip the guy over their shoulders, kind of. Like, they were, like both did a pretty good job of it. So that reminds me against this. We have Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin both kind of catching it in the flat and then immediately coming back. So I wonder if that's, like, a coaching tip because – like, we saw in the preseason with uh, Campbell, he blew up George Pickens on a crossing route. And he's typically a pretty good tackler, so that's interesting. I wonder if that's coaching. But our guy's got to coach better tackling, I guess. Nice play by last year's leading tackler in the NFL. Watch it one more time. Didn't get a lot of pressure or penetration or whatever you want to call it up front. I mean, Hamilton was kind of double teamed, so what do you want him to do? Allen kind of had to respect the read option. This is a play that the linebackers have to make based on both of these double teams, and Allen have to mean to respect the quarterback. So, Lloyd did a good job here, I think. Both of them did, of not overcommitting. Because Lloyd could have seen... Well, he was keeping his eyes on um, Wentz. And so, just nothing on a special rep from Lloyd after watching it eight times. Before, he does a good job of not overcommitting and coming back, maintaining gap responsibility. All the buzz terms, baby. Solid play. Jacksonville did... I should have looked this up before, but Jacksonville's run defense was good in terms of like limiting explosive plays. That was an underrated story for them last year, too. 
like they just did not let up a lot of good big plays on the ground. And obviously that's going to be important um, come Sunday against Jonathan Taylor, who's, for my money, the best back in the league. Ooh! <laughs> good job, Jenkins. We need to knock his ass down. All right. I didn't even see it on the first one. We got a safety blitz. Had an option up here too. I mean, not really what you want to call against stick, especially if you're not confident your linebackers can get out there in a flash. Uh, but you also, I mean, this is not an uncommon stick stick formation you'd see tight end then receiver then receiver farther out and so that's good uh scheming frankly because there's just more ground when this guy flashes out instead of going boom boom it's more ground for this guy i have to cover on a play like this when jenkins blitzes and then the bottom of the screen we just have Maybe this wasn't even technically a blitz. I mean, it is five rushers, so yeah, that's a blitz. <laughs> it's definitely a blitz. I'm just getting messed with right now because Trayvon Walker is dropping back in the coverage. And he is an outside linebacker. And he did it in camp once or thrice in college. I saw a clip of it on Twitter, but it so surprised me. Like he just wasn't anywhere close. Not going to be doing that for another couple days. Games. Man, Jacksonville needs like a safety and edge. Edge would unlock a lot. Good job by Jenkins after I roasted him earlier. Pass breakup. Prevented a touchdown. I don't really know what else there is to say about this play. Like, this is why you need an edge rusher. Is over here. Not that Trayvon won't develop into a great one and doesn't already have great flashes so far. I mean, it's also not like he's going to, like, get over here when he's rushing this or when Wentz is rolling out the opposite side but so that you can play Trayvon more on the inside where he's better and would just terrorize guards um and then like you need someone not just another edge rusher but a really good one because you have so many like one stopping d tackles up front who clearly aren't getting any push it's so, like you need if you have bodies in the interior I feel like you need athletes and pass rush winners on the outside so we'd like to see josh allen win a little bit more frequently <laughs> as there's a quarterback hat hit from the d line but that's moot who's basically an end there we go <clears throat> third down we can get a little bit more wide in the formation because we're not worrying about the run that's why the early down run defense is important, so that we can do this. Smoot gets the first win of the day in pass, um, pass rushing reps. We played quarters? Looks like it might be cover six, which is <clears throat> cover two, one defender, two D defenders. Cover three, one, two, three. The mouse probably isn't good for the example. 
cover six basically is where you have half a defender or one defender playing half a field and then quarters coverage here so a fourth of the field then quarters coverage here a fourth of the field cover six so then with cover six we have it can sometimes be man or like a cloud coverage down here where you're just taking away this perimeter receiver which especially makes sense considering there's trips in the strongest side of the formations on the right so like this is a big thing that's kind of happening across the NFL that everyone like talking about leading up to the Super Bowl since the Bengals have so many good receivers and the Rams and they both like going 11 personnel so much uh, this is a popular call where you have trips and then your star receiver on this side. Well, I guess I did it differently. For the Bengals, they have Jamar Chase, their star receiver on this side. And for the Rams, they had Cooper Cup, their star receiver, in one of these two spots for the most of the time. Uh, for Cup, it's to have get advantageous um, targets over the middle of the field. For Chase, it's just because you have to have two players over here in order to guard him. He's like, no one's going to be able to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. I don't know. I can't, I'm not explaining it very well, and I'm sorry. But basically, trips coverage is pretty popular. Not that it ever wasn't, but especially now so with how many good receivers are in the league trying to figure out how to defend it. So on this trips coverage, we have Terry McLaurin down here, an objective star receiver, and the Jaguars choose to defend it with cover six. Not a surprising call because we have a lot of numbers up here, but we have man coverage and a help defender down here. Or not a man. Well, let's see if it's man. Yes, a man defender. Because while over here, everyone's kind of reading zones of the field in spaces rather than men. On here, if it was zone, Tyson would turn his back to the sideline so they could read the quarterback and everything happening in front of him. But since he's in man coverage on star receiver Terry McLaurin, he's in man with help over the top. So hopefully that rant for the last five minutes made some sense. And this is what you want. Just like I was talking about earlier with uh, getting opposing teams into third and long so you can let loose on the blitz packages. Jacksonville didn't blitz here. Just ran a cover six with four down men. And this is what you want to see. A good play call, but the players execute it. Because we have our upcoming star cornerback in Tyson Campbell lock down someone who's already been to a Pro Bowl, I'm pretty sure. Don't fact check me. Someone who deserved to go to a Pro Bowl in Terry McLaurin. And then we have someone winning on the outside. So good job by coaches and players on this third down to force Washington to take a field goal. This is a good play. This is a good play. This is a good play. That was impressive defense. That's a good rep. Was that second down? After I just talked about third down? Oh my god. Still a good rep for second down. <laughs> Makes a little bit more sense why they sent four. <laughs> so this is third down to send them into the field goal. Here we're still rushing four, but we have a stunt game over the middle. Just interlooping. Guys, <clears throat> taking off our run defenders, putting in Smoot and Key, who are both definitely better pass rushers. Smoot again with the best rep. Wow. Oh, he got called for the penalty on this one, didn't he? But he ducks under this one, which I didn't notice live. Hmm. Allen gets close, but good anchor by Leno. Leno. I'm just going to call him Leno. You can see Trayvon go for the long arm and then to the power move. But even though I was raving about his power earlier, like this is just impressive power from the left tackle. Doesn't move. I mean, there's other guys coming and stuff, but... <clears throat>
Norwo is probably the one mistake if you're in a, trying to fix what Washington did. Just recognizing the uh, games being played. But saw a job by Washington's O-line to give once enough time to get the ball off. Like, it's all crossing routes. you got to get this ball out. You had him here. I understand pressure was coming. He, but he could have st stepped up. I don't really... This is pretty disgusting by Carson Wentz. On third and ten, too. I mean... And then they just got bailed out by the late hit by Smoot. But, like, I don't really, like, what was... He was clearly just kind of trying to get rid of it, but... Oh, my God. Like, where were you looking? I mean, he went through a lot of reads quick, but I felt like it was too quick. He was trying to get to his check down very fast. Some... The opposite of Trevor. But we'd rather have Trevor's problem. <laughs> what a gnarly play. This game was fun at first and then it slowed down. Good job by Washington's tight end up here of saving the play. Flashback to the Jags last year. Two players running the same route, covering the same area of the field looking for the ball. <clears throat> so it was a good job that they kind of were able to separate, give Carson one of two targets rather than just both being in the same area. Um, so I guess this is on... Foley, Foley, this is Foley, Foley, and this is Foley. I think I keep getting them mixed up. Maybe I should learn names. Now I'm a film gun now. Numbers only. 23. In coverage. Kept his eyes on the quarterback a little bit too long. Not mad about it. Four yard gain. Uh-oh, looks like man coverage. It is, it is. Carson knew he had his guy. I mean, in today's NFL, D coordinators are good. So <clears throat> you're not you don't can't necessarily know hundred percent sure when both when someone trails someone across the formation that you're gonna get man coverage. But man is played a lot in the red zone. So it's a pretty solid bet anyway. So Carson had a pretty Good indication he was going to have his man. Shaq so far has played. I haven't been paying a lot of attention on coverage when passes aren't thrown more than 5 or 10 yards. But the fact that it's been a quiet game from Shaq is a good thing until now. Can't see the route from the end zone, but like, I don't know enough about cornerback play to say anything other than do better. Dotson does do a really good job of getting up close. This is something that Tay Adams talks about all the time, getting up to the cornerback and then breaking, because you break too far away, then it's easier for the cornerback to just kind of follow you. But you want to get right up on the quarterback and then create separation. So Dawson does a good job of getting close, like very close. And then as soon as Shaq puts his hands up to try to put hands on him and slow him down, swim move, touchdown. Shaq does a decent job of covering for a wide pop of a throw, but that's a very good play by Jahan Dotson. Shut me up. I was like maybe my biggest receiver take this year. For uh, rookie receivers, is that Jahan Dotson was like more of a third round guy than a first round guy, but 
Then I, he just roasted my team. That was a really good route. I don't know. I don't know how to like coach Shaq to be better on that one. I can appreciate that Dotson won the rep and how he did it. I don't know what Jags coaches tell um, Shaq to do next time. Get hands on him sooner. Be a little bit more aggressive since you're bigger. I mean, so far, like, the Jags had, like, two, three ugly missed tackles and can't get a lot of pass rush, which is a concern against this good, not great, good but not great offensive line. Like, their run defense has been very good. Like, maybe two bust coverages. I know it's just Carson Wentz in Washington, but, like, so far, it's, like, the defense has held together in their first game. It's really just those missed tackles and then a couple penalties. Just like mistakes to clean up. But one of the things that I saw with the Jags offense on Tuesday is that besides the big mistakes, there was, seemed to be a pretty high floor. Like if you wipe away the window last year, take away the big mistakes, it was just still a shit show. If you wipe away the big mistakes this year, I think it's an ice cream cone. Ha ha ha. I wasn't paying any attention to what happened as far as talking. Can't multitask. Fun fact, multitasking is impossible. We think we can do it, but the human brain just goes rapidly to one thing and another. So you're not actually good at it. I mean, good rep by the defense. Just push in the pocket, get a hand up, good coverage on the backside to, uh, or the backside, the back, yeah, sure, either one to uh, make Wentz get to his check down. So that was sound defense, a good rep. And now after a run stuff and sound defense, we're facing third and 11. It's two good early down plays. What we like to see. The third down stuff and the missed tackles, that stuff is volatile. And I know it seems like just Jaguars type plays, but like, <laughs> this is nice, man. Good tackle by Shaq. I mean, ooh, this is interesting. All right, so what we got here is Tampa 2, but it's inverted. So we have a lot of guys near the line of scrimmage. And then we drop back to Tampa 2. But usually in Tampa 2, you see the middle linebacker take, okay, so first of all, Cover two to just go through quickly. Two deep defenders, five shallow defenders. Usually, the middle linebacker gets the most middle zone in the middle of the field. And then in Tampa, the middle linebacker just gains more depth. So it's good for like third and 11 play calls like this. The wrinkle on this play is that instead of the middle linebacker being the one to gain depth and get the middle area of the zone in Tampa 2 coverage... Instead, we have slot cornerback Darius Williams fly to the middle and take that area instead. So he exchanges assignments, I guess, uh, post-snap. And so post-snap movement is a huge part of what's happening in the NFL right now in terms of just stopping crazy good quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. Like You can't just show quarterbacks what you're going to be doing so they have pre-snap answers. And so this is cool to see. This is why we watch the film, baby. Not much push up front. Like, I think Wentz, like, he's probably tried to, like, cut down on turnovers and just being loosey-goosey since that's what got kicked out of two teams in the past two years. But, like, I think he can, like, kind of just, like, take off from the court, from the um, pocket. But maybe he's been coached and been, like, you got to be more safe, man. So he's just been going to check downs a lot quicker. So again, the pass rush is underwhelming, but sound coverage back deep, good coaching, or just cool coaching. Shaq makes a nice play of making sure he gets up. Lloyd helps out. Not that it was like a particularly difficult job of these two guys of like passing off just these two guys. Um, 
but a good rep, sound defense. Again, we saw a lot of big turnovers or big mistakes on Sunday, and that's what sticks in our head. But right now I'm seeing some encouraging base defense. So we have a Tampa 2 invert call on 3rd and 11. A little bit less blitzing than I would have expected. Although, small sample size. Feels like the biggest play the team, or the biggest run, I should say, that the team led up all game. Mm. What went wrong? There's just kind of a mash up front. I mean, so is every play, but like these guys on the offense run into each other. Hamilton's late. <clears throat> Hamilton has one on one and the run's coming his play. You gotta have the confidence in him as your nose tackle to be able to shed this block. I mean, he maybe got a, held a little bit and that's what it was. And then, honestly, probably more than Hamilton. Because, like, just because you don't win a rep doesn't mean, like, the play's your fault. The play's on the fault of the guys who don't clean up. So we have 23 just coming a little bit. He's a little bit eager, eager to get there. Lloyd's a little bit too far outside. Opens up a hole. I mean, the first not great rep, obviously the first first down uh, or 10-plus yard run play. But we've seen it as the road, the first bad one. Let's go back one more time. A little bit more patience from the linebackers, and ideally, him gets free there next time, doesn't get held. I don't know, just one run, one big run. Nice coverage by Walker here. First of two screens that he sniffed out. Looks like more invert. This is cover two invert again. Hey yo. Recognize that it was cover invert because the safety and <clears throat> the cornerback switched places essentially. And so now again you're gonna have Tampa to invert where we have five shallow zones, two deep zones. The middle zone defender is dropping deeper than usual, which makes it Tampa. The reason it's inverse is because the safety would usually be here. Um, but instead he's here. The corner would usually be guarding this flat zone. Instead, Campbell dropped down to the deep half. And then, <clears throat> similar to... A Tampa call we saw early in the game. Uh, Wentz does another good job of just getting it out to the soft spot, which is just like, since the middle defender is dropping so far back. Um, I wonder, can you guys see my mouse? Oh, I have comments. So on the touchdown against Zach, he, Shaq, he jumped outside. On the touchdown against Shaq, so the Dotson route, I didn't really see him jump outside, to be honest. I mean, he might have, and maybe I missed it, but 
Good call. I don't thought you ever happened. Appreciate the comment. I think it was just more he got Lam uh, Dotson beat him with his hands. Um, okay, Tampa 2 invert. Is that what we were talking about? Oh, yeah. I I'm trying to point stuff out. That's why I said. went to the comments. I'm trying to point stuff out with my mouse. So, yeah, sorry if you can't see my mouse. What I was saying, though, is because this middle zone is back here because of Tampa, and then this area is open, as we see it. So Wentz does a good job of finding the area. And then player makes a play. Again, Lloyd looks just not good here. Oh, my gosh. That's embarrassing. Holy Gavolt. <sighs> mm. Nice play by Hamilton. That's probably why he was high on ESPN's pass rush, rush win weight leaderboard, because that was one of three pass rush attempts he took. Oh, let's get here first. Sorry. Heck yeah. That was sick by him. Nice to see some players. Maybe they're warmed up a little bit. Shook off the dust. Winning some one-on-ones. Let's check out the coverage real quick. A lot of cover too. Which really surprises me only because... Um, just didn't get a lot of it. Last year under Colin, it was a lot more single high stuff until the second half of the year. And then even the zone stuff was like not necessarily dominated by uh, cover two. Didn't run more too high stuff per se, but like this feels like a lot of cover two in a row. I don't know. I don't know that's a bad thing. Just trying to just noticing things. <clears throat> this is definitely Campbell. Like he has the flat, unless I'm. Like, maybe it's cover... Th Based on how deep he gets, maybe it's not cover two and he has something deeper. It could be cover three and there was just no one over there and he comes up to make a play. Either way, like... I mean, Hamilton does come off the edge, but... This might be on Lloyd more than anyone else. Like, not that it's an easy play to make, but he might need to, like, pass off this coverage quick... A little quicker. Eh, I don't know. What down is this? First and ten. So it's not like... It's not like they were just trying to keep stuff in front of them on uh, third down. Couldn't tell you which what that coverage was. Looks like cover two at first look, but based on the way Campbell was playing it, I think it might have been something different. Um, but if... Like, Wentz's connections right now are all short stuff so far. Like, if we're going to let up completions, that's a completion we want to let up. So, wasn't executed perfectly, whatever the execution was supposed to be. Oops. Uh, but not, not too bad. Let's go. Oh, that was like the Josh Allen one where he, like, blew up the reverse, and then it was just an underwhelming finish. Like, this is awesome defense. Really nice play by Jenkins. I mentioned his run defense earlier. Uh, but you got to finish on that. Like, you're a team captain. It's supposed to be a locker room guy. I'm assuming that's why they're keeping him around. Third and two. <clears throat> Gets caught up in a pick. running man defense here. I mean, you see that a lot across the league. Like, pretty much everyone does a lot of zone to keep stuff short on early downs and then mans up and blitzes on third downs. Like, not necessarily that everyone does that, but it's not, like, that's a pretty common trend. So, I mean, that's what we're seeing here. When the dog's loose, but no one's getting really home. 
Hamilton does win another one and get another hit. Not a knockdown, but... After he didn't shed that block on the goal line earlier that I was talking about, two good pass rush plays. Um, and then just, like, Jenkins and, like... Arguably your two worst pass defenders. Lloyd might be the worst right now, but I'm expecting him to hopefully become one of the best. And then these two guys, uh, you bolt. Nice. That's going to happen every once in a while until you get a better roster. Good job by one still getting it up. I guess. I don't have to compliment Carson Wentz. Look at how deep freaking Jenkins is getting. It looks like a more cover two, though. I mean, pretty easy to see, just five guys. I think um, whether or not they're, they call it Tampa, not that they would call it something else, but regardless of the lingo, like, it looks like most, maybe not all of them, but the middle zone defender is gaining depth a lot. Now on this one, he does a good job of recognizing that there's just like, who am I going to cover deep? Let me get up to where they've attacked our Tampa 2 defense before. So Wentz tries... I believe Wentz tries going to Thomas here, yeah, which has like been the area that's worked against Tampa 2. But then both the linebackers do a good job of getting there quick, even at the pass, did get past the line of scrimmage. That's what we need from 9-4. Tips balls. That's what Washington did all game. <clears throat> nice play. Sound defense. I like that one. Not really asking a lot of our cornerbacks. Tackling, aggressiveness, which they're both big and strong. But in terms of man, like we saw Campbell man up um, McLaurin on the cover six. And that was a good rep. Other than that, like, Darius Williams got beat, like, twice in our linebackers. But, like... What, like, what happened there? Wow, Josh Allen just... <laughs> that was cool. Josh Allen has been... Kind of non-existent this game, except two big plays. And those big plays matter. Playmaking matters. You just really... Like, people like Trayvon Walker have splash plays, and you're like, I'd like to see more consistency. But that's fair for someone like Trayvon Walker, who we all know is raw coming out of college. I hate that Josh Allen is like, it's year four or five or whatever it is, and we're still asking for consistency from him. But it is nice to see flashes like that. Mm. Right when I was talking about whether cornerbacks are getting tested or not, Shaq makes a good play deep. Let's see if there's any pressure up front. I mean, who, who got there late? Was that Smoot? No, that's 9-4. 9-4 had a pretty solid debut. Got some, got some bodies up front. Let's see what the coverage was. I believe this is more cover two invert. We're going to have both of the cornerbacks drop into the deep halves here for cover two. 
and then we're going to have Cisco come up. Well, how many people do they rush? Five rushers. So maybe it was more of like a fire zone coverage or like there's probably specific blitz coverages that are just out of my league. But they're clearly playing zone. It's clearly some kind of invert considering they have what was the two deep safeties come up and the two corners come back. So it's another cool wrinkle, even if I can't perfectly explain it. Um, and Shaq, like, this is a nice play. It's a little worrisome, like, here, seeing that he's going to get turned around. But he comes back and makes a break on this. That's a good play by Shaq Griffin, who I always, like, liked as a signing, to be honest. Like I And I always thought he was underrated by Jags fans. So I know he maybe makes a mistake later in the game. But so far, like, you like to see this from a high-paid corner. Good pass breakup. One for the interception, too. Good play by two big free agent signings. Didn't see, haven't seen that a ton, if I'm being honest. But that was nice. Big run. Mm. 9-4 gets a little greedy, I guess. It was a nice run by Gibson, honestly. To get kind of skinny or whatever you want to call it. Trayvon's just like not able to get all the way to the other side of the formation since he has to kind of sort of pay attention to everything happening over here. So good job of like getting that close and then getting close enough to... Well, he kind of just ran out the field. Mm. But like... That's why it's fun watching 4-4. Four, four. Like, look at him kind of lean towards our right and then burst to the left. I don't know, maybe it's hard to see, but, like, it's small things you got to appreciate, and hopefully they'll turn into big things down the road. Nice play here on first down. Love to see a gang tackle. Again, Carson Wentz, like, he got that one to, off to Shaq, but, like, pretty low A dot, despite, like, good recent pressure from the Jaguars, but for the most part, like, no one's been, like, doing anything crazy with the pass rush. Now we got a second and 12. I'm in the second half now. It's been about an hour. I think we're doing a pretty good time. As long as we can watch kickoff for this great Thursday night game. Man, why am I, like, calling everything? Trayvon Walker, little things to big things. Here's the big thing. <laughs> that was so mean. He just swatted his hand away. <laughs> this guy's poor right arm. Oh! <laughs> yes, 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 yes. This is what we like to see. That's a legit pass rush move, man. Like, he's not just relying on his strength. And it's not consistent, but neither is Josh Allen. He was in his fourth or fifth year or whatever we decided. Fourth. It's got to be the fifth. I think. He's got to be in his fifth year. Third and long. We're on a screen. Way to get to the ball. Was it a screen or was it just a dump off? I mean, it was definitely a screen. This big boy's out there. 
Ooh, that was kind of cool. Nice. I mean, it's Darius Williams, who weighs as much as me, but. All right, let's see what Jacksonville is doing. Because this is the first time we've seen a play that didn't get called off sides, like the one we saw in the first quarter, where it's just a bunch of people standing up. It's third and 14. Trayvon kind of like runs over someone. Arden Key again, like they're trying to run. That's the second time we've seen Trayvon go inside with Key looping around. And Key just like, I don't know if he's not a good looper. He hasn't been so far. But it's tough because it's like, who are, like, you need someone to loop from the inside out. Does Jacksonville really have anyone that can do that besides Key? Like last year it was Jahad Ward doing that with Josh Allen. So, like, do you have Trayvon play on the inside? Like, that's why you need another edge rusher. So you can have Trayvon being the one that's looping outside. Or, like, I mean, he can play from, like, the outside, like the seven probably. i like to see in the future if we can get Key crashing from the outside and Trayvon being the one coming around. Because Trayvon's just a freak of nature athlete. And, I mean, it's just been two reps from Key so far. But it hasn't been, like, great in terms of bending around to the outside. I mean, this was a screen. So you can't really criticize pass rush too much with a screen since they're trying to just push in one direction. Um, but it's just a four-man rush with a stunt on the left side uh, and four non... Not that they don't stop the run, but, like, get your pa best pass rushers on. All right, we figure out the front for this third down. What's happening on the back? It looks like Tampa 2 invert. Why is everything Tampa 2 invert? Here we're going to have... They're trying to make it seem like tamp or cover two, which it is. But this is more of a like you could call it cover three, but I'm like it's Tampa two because Cisco just had to go from here to here. And then we have five shallow defenders right here, and then two D defenders, one two. Inverted because a safety is coming up and switching assignments. So Again, kind of an idea of what Mike Caldwell likes to do. Not a lot of heavy blitzes. The blitzes that we've seen have all been five-man. I don't think we've seen anything with at least six rushers. Maybe once. We had a good cover six play call with Campbell having a good rep um, against a trips formation, and then the rest has been cover two invert. So I like the, I like the coaching on the backside. The coverage on the backside has been good. Um, just need a little bit more juice from the pass rush. I mean, clearly, like, they... Or, no, this was a screen. But... The back end's looking pretty solid. As long as Rayson Jenkins can't... Isn't trusted to cover half the field. I'm sorry to call you out, but... Stop the run on early downs. This is the formula, baby. Nice play by Hamilton. Goss is two. Thank God we signed him back. That was weird two weeks ago when we, he got cut for a, a practice squad linebacker or just basically a special teams are. But they probably said to him, hey, you want to re-sign again for another signing bonus? And he said, sure, or just something like that. I'm sure there was communication inside the building. Long story short, glad he's back because Gossis is a pretty solid disruptor from time to time. Right here, it gets off uh, the double team. Norwell doesn't have good enough positioning. Doesn't get a good enough angle. I mean, it's not even really... I wouldn't pin this on Norwell because like you can't see what's happening behind him. And hypothetically, Gibson could push this up depending on what's happening with the rest of this play. But this is good by Gossis and Hamilton. It's a group effort. Because Hamilton comes over and wins his block, which makes Gibson bounce it a little bit outside. Gosses was wins his block as well. Uh, Trayvon Walker does a very good job. Josh Allen, excuse me, does a very good job of containing a edge, or else Gibson would have just continued bouncing this off. So that's good run defense by three different people on the D-line. That's what we like to see on first and tens. That's what we need to see this weekend against Jonathan Taylor. Carson Wentz again here is playing the numbers game. Doing his best Mac Jones impression from Bama. Um, I 
It looks like this guy is coming over a little bit late. Um, get the ball into the, your hands of your playmakers. Jacksonville's been doing a much better job since the first quarter of coming up to tackle. I mean, Washington hasn't gotten a lot of opportunities in space. Like, that is kind of clustered. But still, overall, better job of talk, tackling. Just better job of really everything after the first quarter. Washington hasn't done, like, anything on offense since, this, since the first quarter. That was a cool play. I liked that. But, again, good run defense. Very little explosive plays. The explosive plays is what killed the Jaguars. But on the non like, other than that, like, they're playing, dare I say, solid. It is against Carson Wentz, but solid D so far. Wait, I forgot to watch the last play. We'll watch it once. Hmm. <laughs> nice job by Campbell. What an incredible fit. You can see Arden Key kind of gets crushed by a tight end, but luckily Campbell is there. That's a that's why you're playing cover two a lot, honestly. Because that those your corners are big and can tackle, so you want them near the line of scrimmage. That's a very underrated part of the game is having good run defenders outside of your front. It's part of the reason. I mean, Jackson was doing a solid job up front. The linebackers have been like a little bit up and down, but like the secondary has been good at tackling. And so that's I think that's an underrated part of the defense. I told you Smoot was slow. Hmm. This might just be cover two again. Shaq goes deep, but he might be realizing there's no one in front of me to guard. So I'm going to help out Cisco. To me, I mean, it could be like almost more of a man match, especially since you see Williams kind of stay with this guy the whole time. This is one I can't tell you exactly what the coverage is, but clearly they do a good job. And that's what matters. Wentz has to bail out. It's about time. Like, I kept expecting him to earlier. And then there was just no one on the right side, so... <laughs> Card and key is just lying on the ground. <sighs> I, do, I mean, the thing is, like, they're... If like the these seven yard gains are what they're picking up, why we live with that? We live with good defense on the backside and pressure forcing Wentz out of the pocket. That's not a win on Sunday, but on Thursday at seven twenty three, we can take positive things from that. Wentz kind of has to bend it outside of <clears throat> Smoot here. Did his breast breast? Excuse me. Best Stafford and Lamar. Mahomes, whatever you want to call it, impression. And it's just terrible. All right, I really don't want to miss this Chargers-Chiefs game, so I'll, I'm going to speed up a little bit, try to. But I think we're making pretty solid time. Try to get a double move at the top, but good defense by Williams. Let's watch the coverage one more time. This is nice man coverage. Let's see if they pass anything off. Muma does a nice job here of picking up this guy. And then... Um, it looks like Walker might almost just be a spy. So, good pass-offs, good sticky man defense. Cisco's back here in case uh, that was open.
solid defense. It's it's the commanders, but like this is solid play. There's not really any holes. This is a type of concept to beat man coverage too. Once actually has a pretty good ball here. Like <clears throat> these crossing routes are how you beat man coverage by just going over the middle. I mean, Kirk feasted on crossing routes. He did about it with a lot of different depths, but he ate against man coverage from the slot, just running across the field. Uh, but the Jaguars do a really good job of with these shallow crossers um, passing off assignments in the middle. Muma does, like, I think this is the first rep, at least I've noticed him. Might be his second or third of the game or something like that, but uh, genuinely impressive job by him picking that guy up. I mean, Foyer is a little late, but like, still makes once have to make a like once makes a good throw, but he it has to be leading the guy, so that's good defense. What down was that third? That was fourth down. Even more impressive. Jags were getting roasted on playing man defense earlier on fourth down too. So that was really that couldn't have been fourth down. Oh yeah, they punted for it. Still third and two man coverage as we expected, even though it's not third and long. Uh, got off the field on third and short. That's always always a good thing. What is happening? Oh, uh, this was. A penalty, free play, yada yada. Nice to see someone come down with this ball. I feel like last year this happened where like a quarterback got a free play and they chucked it up and two Jags just like ran into each other. So, or even doing good on the free plays or the dead plays, I should say, since it was a flag on the Jags. Missed tackle on open space. Don't love that by Jenkins. Although that was pretty solid defense. I like the depth that he got to make sure that uh, Wentz couldn't throw it over him and underneath of Campbell here in coverage. So I like the depth that Jenkins got. And I think he played this, honestly, really well. It's just that Gibson broke a tackle. So next time, finish a tackle, and that's a good rep by Jenkins. Other than that, <clears throat> pretty, solid, pretty solid defense. I mean, what happens up front? Whew. All right, well, I wasn't even paying attention to the front, but this is another example of a very good rep, but you just got to finish. Man. Got to finish. <clears throat> but everything else is there. And that was like two mistakes, and it was a nine-yard game. That's like the biggest, the worst play the Jags have had in a while. Good run defense. Although that was second and short, and then got the first. That's another one, kind of like the ham one I was talking about. That was near the uh, end zone. Like maybe he got held a little bit. You'd like to see him get off that block, but like look at him kind of like holding his arm. I think there might have been a no call there. Um, and then you hope that 2-3 can... Like, he does a good job of kind of getting there before the tight end reaches the block. But then at the same time, he doesn't. But, I mean, run defense is a group effort for the most part, unless someone just, like, bulldozes the guard. But, obviously, you can't rely on that. So, another group effort. <laughs> Lloyd is looking a little bit more comfortable. Nice flow. Is this third and long? Second and eight. Ah. Ha! 
I have not seen a Jaguars cornerback do that since Jalen Ramsey. And Jalen Ramsey is probably the best I'll see in my lifetime at breaking on routes and intercepting them. But it's nice to see Campbell getting flashes of 2.0. That's just... Like what I was talking about with Josh Allen earlier, like you just need playmakers on defense, especially since defense, like you rely so much on just like volatile things like sacks and turnovers. Can't necessarily rely on them every game. So it's good to see plays being made, especially by young players. That's just an incredible play by Tyson Campbell, breaking on the ball, recognizing that he's breaking on the route and just going. That's just a <laughs> I, I don't know how else to say it. It's a very good football play. And, like, I don't even necessarily think this is a terrible throw by Wentz. I mean, Tyson is already breaking, but Wentz is really looking at him and sees that there's separation here. And, ooh, the ball is pretty behind him. I think that's what helped out with the interception. So, not a great throw. But, irregardless, great play by Campbell. Awesome to see. I think I roasted him on the first play, and since then, he's been great. The ability to do zone or man is... Oh, yeah, as long as Darius Williams can... Um, his coverage has been pretty actually solid for the most part. It's just that like he has to finish plays. We just got to finish plays. Like this. Holy cow, man. That's not really finishing a play, that's that's making a play. So we have plays being made, like this, the Campbell pick, Josh Allen uh, tackle for loss on the reverse. And we have a good base on plays where we're not making a play, if this rant makes any sense. We just have to finish on like the non-turnovers, on the normal stuff, on the second and sevens. Just got to finish plays that are getting set up well by the coaching staff. A similar theme with the offense. Just got to execute to the play to the whistle. No matter what my dad's quotes. I mean, every coach probably says that, but. I like that Gossis is getting his hands up, but he kind of made a sacrifice. Um, I'm surprised Norwell didn't punish, punish him, because I've seen Norwell in the past with, when someone jumped. I think it was someone on the Titans last year. Someone jumped up, and Norwell just shoved him to the ground, if I remember it correctly. Gossis jumps and gets kind of caught for it once does a good job of taking off. So Williams is playing a like interesting technique, at least interesting for my eyes. Because I explained earlier, if you turn your back on the quarterback, you're probably in man. But I think what well, you can see that there's clear inside leverage here by Williams. And so I think he's just like keeping an eye on his zone, even if he is turning his back to the quarterback. Turns his eyes back pretty soon there. And then other than that. We might have cover six down here again. Are there any trips? No. All right, I don't want to just take forever trying to figure out what the coverage was, but clearly it was good coverage. Gossis just kind of sort of got caught jumping, didn't contain. Not that it was necessarily his job to. But these are like the small, like this isn't like necessarily a mistake. It's just we'll let up the non-explosive plays with mostly sound defense and then get the plays later. I mean, it's 22-14. Washington had a great opening drive from Scott Turner. A great opening drive from Scott Turner. 
It was just good play calling. And then some missed tackles on the next drive to set up the touchdown. Also, there was missed tackles, and then I think the second touchdown drive was when um, Rayshon Jenkins had like the bad play that should have been a pass breakup, but he overran it. So we have the mistakes and the reasons that led to touchdowns in the first two drives. Since then, like, scoreless and two turnovers. Good tackling by your cornerback. It was awesome to see Williams make that play after missing two, if not three, tackles in the first half. That's a really good play. That's the kind of play he made with the Rams. That's that's a good play. Williams, like, two big mistakes, but in general, like, a solid game. Whereas, like, right, like you see on Sunday, Josh Allen, two or three big plays, hasn't done a ton. Actually, he's been a little bit more consistent since I pegged him for consistency. But you get the point. First busted coverage... Maybe of the game. Or at least since the first or second drive. So we have trips to the left. I almost want to say this is cover six, but to the non-trip side. Because it seems like we have a half or a quarter zone here, a quarter zone here. Or are they just playing? No, because then, like, like who's playing deep over here? It has to be Tyson Campbell covering this half of the field, especially with how quick Rayshon gets up. So the safety here is covering, like, the flat curl area. So he gets up to guard this. Basically, this is just like it was. This is the same thing as the first busted covers that we saw in the first drive. It's just once connecting on a route combination that's be meant to beat cover three. I mean, I know I said this is cover six earlier, but like sale concept where it's one guy going to the sideline deep, one going to the sideline middle, one running to the flat, going to the sideline short, and then the Jaguars just have Jenkins short, Campbell deep, no one in the middle. I mean, like. On this play, like I guess you hope that Lloyd keeps going, but like over here is in his zone, so uh, like I think this is just a good play call, not the best play call. Like we had too many people for the Jaguars on the weak side of the formation, and so this is like the first bad play call that I can point out. I don't know why we don't have more guys over here. I mean, what down is it? Third and eight. Well, there's part of the explanation. Like, I don't even know what to describe this stuff as. It's cool to see Chase Long get his first pass rush rep of the game. He, like, barely played. I'm not saying that now. Pretending to drop into coverage. So that's why we had the um, not enough bodies over here. Because we were sending the blitz from the right side. Rayshon was eager to cover up where Chase Long was um, coming from. And then that just left a void. Campbell like had to stay with this guy. What else was he going to do? So it was just a good play call by the Redskins commanders against the play call of the Jaguars. Wentz found the open guy. So now I don't think this is... Also, like the trips was created because of a late motion. So good play calling by Washington. It's about time they, like, figure something out on offense. The Jaguars just got beat on a uh, blitz.
It's only rushing four on this one. Here's the big mistake. What down is this? I do think Washington saw something on film because I saw something on film where Shaq was like, it was one where I was like, I think it's cover two, but the way that Shaq is moving back makes me think it's cover six. So I think they saw like, if you go, like I think they just thought that this was going to be open because of how Jackson was playing it earlier. I think this is good coaching by Washington. I can't, like, because... Maybe it's a man match with safety over the top. I'm a little bit dumbfounded by what this coverage is because, like, the way that the corners are playing it. I think this is a little bit more on Shaq Griffin than I expected, but I always thought it was more on Cisco than him. I think Peterson mentioned after the game that um, Griffin was – playing trail coverage which basically means like you get you almost let the receiver run behind run past you but you're just like staying on his hip because you expect coverage over the top and so well or not like what other regardless of the type of coverage this play call was that i can't figure out at the moment Shaq was playing a little bit of trail coverage and just like i don't think he got beat necessarily it's just like he saw Terry start running, so he started running, and Terry's just faster than he is. It's Cisco's job to get this. Like, this is a play that Marcus Williams, who's awesome, but like, this is a play that is makeable, is what I'm trying to say. And Cisco just feels like he has to um, respect this deep crosser that's coming over him. Flips his hips, but takes a not a good angle or doesn't run hard enough or something. I'm interested in like what the that coverage just looks so weird compared to everything else they're running too. I wonder if that was just a bust. Maybe it was Shaq and they were running cover three. The way that Cisco like wasn't even running that hard made me think it was like. Like, Shaq was running harder than Cisco was on that play, which makes me think that it's more of a coverage bust on Shaq's part. I don't even know how to explain that one. Let's watch it one more time. I mean, Tyson opens his hips... Keeps the guy in front of him. Darius is doing this weird turn my back, but I'm actually playing his own coverage again. Even though 2-3 is clearly in zone defense. Or that's 33, Lloyd. There's just a lot going on in this play. Clearly, everyone wasn't synced up, so I can't tell who it was. But I was raving about the Jaguars playing sound defense in the back. There was a little pump fake that once had that might have uh, made some sort of impact. I mean, I said earlier, Terry's a star receiver. I don't know. That was a weird one. But you'd expect that to not happen. He was pretty open. That was weird. There is a lot going on here. 
Nice job by... Okay, I was... Just talking about getting Trayvon to do the bending. Lloyd didn't go all the way around the tackle, but... I like the patience. Patience to get around, burst, and then he keeps his footing rather than just going right by. That's a really good rep by Lloyd. Holy cow. That's a good rep by Lloyd, man. That makes me more excited for him. All right, let's move on. Got about 10 more minutes of film to get through. 30 minutes till uh, Thursday Night Football. We got trips with your star receiver up here again. League-wide trend. I mean, it's just main coverage. Williams is getting a lot of depth, it looks like. Which is weird, because the two outside corners didn't get a lot of depth. Which doesn't mean Williams necessarily has to, but... I, I wonder if Jackson was playing kind of like a, what we saw in the third and two that they stopped with main coverage and Newman was on the field. I wonder if they're doing something over the middle of the field... Uh, like switching off. So Williams was like playing off, almost just assuming that Samuel was going to go to the inside and then Williams would be able to pick off someone else. Um, and then Samuel just went five yards and stopped and caught it. Pretty easy read by Wentz though to see after he backed off so much. First and 15, six minutes left in the game, two-point lead. More trips. Oh, that was close and gross. Man, do y'all see Terry beat Tyson? Look at the bottom right here. Oh, that's another touchdown. Man. Imagine if that happened, if Terry had two in a row. That's another touchdown. That's the... Wow. I mean, I'm sure you have Cisco or someone else coming back to help. Like, Jenkins saw the pass being thrown, or else he would have come back to maybe stop a touchdown. But, like, the catch was for sure happening. And Terry is Jets. I think they call him Jet, so. <clears throat> or F1. Maybe both. Jet is Justin Jefferson, obviously. Ooh, nice. Nice push by Allen, but just didn't really get there. That was an interesting one. There was a lot, there was a lot that happened on that one. I mean, it's a pretty boring play. Cover two again, maybe? That one was hard to tell. <clears throat> nice job by Shaq, though. Again, cornerback run defense, underrated. Not that that was run defense, but it, like, it was kind of sort of run defense because he already had the ball in his hands, and it was a running back, so you know what I mean. Especially after Williams missed a tackle on uh, Gibson in space. 
Good to see Shaq make that tackle. Mm. Nice play over the coverage. Again, a lot of uh, changing assignments as players cross over the middle of the field. Was that caught? Oh, wow. I thought that was incomplete. So technically, this is Shaq's man in coverage, but he's kind of sort of thinking he's going to go inside. Jenkins is the one that should make the play on this as the guy who would take the crosser, or at least is clearly helping out in that area of the field. Um, but it's a good job by Wentz, I think we'll see here, putting on the back hip and away from Jenkins. Like, it's a pretty accurate throw. Hmm. Defense was kind of fast on that one, but the offense was faster. It's not the end of the world to let up these. I mean, I know that was a first down, but letting up seven yard gains over the middle of the field, it's really hard to stop those consistently. Another good tackle by Shaq. Put some respect on Shaquille Griffin. even if he might have busted that touchdown coverage. This is why we watch film. He's a good player. Just because he dropped two interceptions last year doesn't mean he's bad. Yeah, that's a good play. I was just double-checking to make sure I didn't give a bunch of credit and he was just in man coverage and got toasted or something. But he was in cover three. He was supposed to cover deep. He did a good job. I mean, he wasn't Tyson Campbell and, come up and came up and intercepted it. But still a good job of recognizing play quickly, coming up and making a tackle. So it was a good rep after all. I mean, middle was just wide open. Fully got there just a little late. First and ten. Balls on the 36. Looks like we're going to get... Man, yeah. I mean, Jenkins made it so obvious. Oh, no, I got him. You go rush. I got this guy in man coverage. And then... Good coverage across the board. Was it four verts? Yeah, four verts. Cam Sins versus Tyson Campbell. I'm surprised that's a matchup we like for Carson Wentz. But good job by Campbell. Stuck with him in coverage. That's a win. Then we got a quarterback knockdown. Nice play by the Jaguars on first down with less than two minutes and it goes. Good blitz call on four verts. It's a nice play call. Josh Allen with the win. He kind of heated up this game. Slow start maybe. Hopefully he keeps that momentum going into week two. Carson Wentz. Man coverage, Williams gets beat. I think it's as simple as that. I mean, it is a push-off if the ref want to call that, but like every receiver pushes off. That one just looked a little bit egregious. Um, generally speaking, I think Williams has looked solid in coverage. That one got pushed off of. He got burned in like... The, near the line of scrimmage by Curtis Samuel, who's like just really good, or at least really shifty. So I think Williams had a decent debut, to be honest. Unless that was him. It was Lloyd.
Lloyd is there, but then <clears throat> another – that was a more subtle push-off. Definitely legal. Good job by Logan Thomas. That's his name, right? Logan Thomas. He was weirdly good – like he's one of the few tight end convert con- converts who's like actually good at tight end. It was a nice route against the rookie. Veteran move against the rookie. Lloyd will do better in the future. But that's week one of, or the first NFL game. That's what happens sometimes. Just like we talk about how it's a different pace for quarterbacks to read the game from college to the NFL. I'm sure it's got to be like that for a middle linebacker or a linebacker too. Mm. Well, I don't really know what Campbell is doing in the box. Oh, it's because Samuel's there. I mean, Lloyd's got to make that play, I think. He just like set up that block perfectly. And then Norwell was able to come get 32 easily. So it's up to these two guys. Trayvon gets off his block, but a little bit late. Fortunately, Lloyd, who also got off his off his block late, got there but made the tackle. A little bit late, but like we've seen more good run defense than bad. That was also with less than two minutes left, and the Jags certainly weren't expecting that. It was a solid play call. So with when our rookies kind of catch up to NFL speed, like that's what was wrong with that, and it's not a surprise. Can't complain too much about that play. Another run play, despite I mean, what was the clock? Uh, there's a little more time left in this game than I expected, but still not a lot, and they're still losing. I guess they only need a field goal, but I don't know. I mean, what do you expect when you have... This is a problem with Darius Williams playing the nickel. Even if he has hustle, he's just so small. Like, even if he read this play perfectly, like he'll still probably get blown up by an offensive lineman. So that's the problem with having him on the field. Just an arm tackle by uh, Roy Robertson-Harris. I feel like I didn't see a ton of snaps from him this game, to be honest. Less than I expected, even with the key signing. Or maybe I just didn't notice him on the field, but kind of had an arm tackle on that one. All right, a lot of runs, so maybe calling runs isn't just good coaching. Maybe it was expected. Um, this one's on Cisco. Walker is already maintaining leverage. Cisco just gets a little bit excited since he came up late and is like, oh, I'm about to make a play. I'm about to make a stop. But this is, like, where the running back goes is where he's supposed to be, right there. So it's a solid job of Lloyd by shutting the block quickly and making the tackle. That's a good rep by Lloyd, not a good rep by Cisco. I want Cisco to be good. So bad. Unfortunately, he's... Not bad, but doesn't necessarily look close to being great either. Let's just move on. Let's just... Hmm. Trying to set up a little uh, thing to Samuel, catch and run after three at least straight runs. Shaq does a nice job of sticking with them, closing in. Good rep by Shaq Griffin. He has a run over to the other side, too. Avoid contact with Rayshon Jenkins. That's a very good rep by Shaquille Griffin. So 
So we send a blitz. Man coverage with one deep defender. Played good defense across the board. Especially like, I mean, the defense is perfect up at the top, but then since Cisco is leaning over to the heavier side of the formation, you get one on one. Um, man coverage. I mean, you can see like the athleticism and why Campbell is promising because he like leans. It takes, it's like, holy cow, that reaction time is quick. He's running towards the sign and comes back up to basically run the route with Dotson. That's impressive athleticism. Uh, but as I wrote about in week, or just in the preseason at some point, Campbell's biggest defense as a defender is locating the ball, which has gone back to the last season. He's got to track the ball and make the play on balls. He sticks with receivers very well, but then just doesn't finish plays. Again, that's what it comes back to for the Jags in week one. I think the base, the coaching, the, the roster is still not great. But it's a solid base. You just got to finish a couple more plays. Tyson's got to turn his hand around, finish through hands, something, anything. Let's see what the <clears throat> blitz package is like, because this will probably be our last good play. This is... I mean, the Jaguars, this is one defender away from being a cover zero all-out blitz. And just no one can get home. Wentz throws a underthrown but catchable ball. Tyson doesn't get his head around, doesn't make a play on the ball. Dawson makes a really impressive catch. That's, a, that's not an easy catch to make. Here comes another blitz. Ugh! That blitz is a lot better, both in terms of the pressure. Eh, not really. Wentz just kind of ran back. Eventually, Tavon got some Trayvon got some push. This one might be on Shaq. Jenkins makes a really good effort here. Look at him. No. Oh, I gotta cover this. Oh, now I gotta cover this. Like Shaq can't cover both of them. Or I mean, excuse me, Jenkins can't cover both of them. Overall, Shaq had the much better game, but that was a good try by Jenkins at least. And Shaq's just gotta keep running. I don't know. Like, even if Shaq was sprinting, like he's not gonna make a play on either of them. It was a two point conversion that didn't matter. I don't know. Red zone, red zone stuff is hard. Do we care about any of this? We'll watch the end zone view. You could see a 2-3 two, two, try to like get the ball out and sort of strip it. So takeaways from game one. Limit the mistakes. Finish plays. Keep making plays. You just got to finish plays. I was encouraged by what the coverages looked like on the back end. A lot of inverts, a lot of switching. That was cool to see. Not very much stuff where Wentz just had an easy pre-read throw. The stuff that he did, really like the big plays, I thought were impressive scheming and coaching by Washington. They had three or four big ones that kind of made the game for them. But in terms of success rate, I think Jacksonville's defense was very good. So... Definitely be a big test against uh, Matt Ryan. I didn't really watch him at all from week one. Apparently it was a gross game from Ryan and just the Colts offense in general. But I think Ryan isn't washed quite yet. We'll see. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Um, I'm going to have a recap up tomorrow. Get my thoughts a little bit more organized, I guess. But it was fun. I wanted to watch Trevor really bad on Tuesday. It was fun just to kind of go through this one blind and see who's good and who wasn't. Everyone was a little bit up and down, to be honest. Just got to get a little more consistent. I'm not really a uh, one-score loss in a sloppy game away in bad conditions isn't concerning to me right now for the Jaguars. I think there's a ton of areas on both sides of the ball where they can just fix mental errors and 
be a lot better. But uh, probably said the same thing after last season. So the difference is we knew the Jaguars were going to start bad, or we at least should have known they weren't going to come out on fire considering the roster and the new coaching staff. But this is more a higher floor than I expected if we're watching the film, seeing what's happening on every play, not just remembering the big plays that happen. I really think I'm not that biased as a fan, but maybe I'm a little biased. We'll see on Sunday. Thanks again for watching. Uh, gonna get a gap. Gonna get gonna, gonna, gonna get out of here. I'm gonna stop talking. Review we post tomorrow.